Hey God's Prayer Warriors, Brother Felix here, and tonight we're going to be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through verse 18. We'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through verse 18. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life, for my wife, Teresa, for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I thank you for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I thank you for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask in your name. May there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us and may we have the courage to apply these verses to our life. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. Treasures in jars of clay. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crutched, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles 
are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's break down some of these verses here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 2 reads, Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Preachers, teachers, and anyone else who talks about Jesus Christ must remember that they stand in God's presence. He hears every word. When you tell people about Christ, be careful not to distort the message to please your audience. Proclaim the truth of God's word. Amen. Verse 3 and 4 read, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. The gospel is open and revealed to everyone, except to those who refuse to believe. Satan is the God of this age. His work is to deceive. And he has blinded those who don't believe in Christ. As you can see in Chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. The allure of money, power, and pleasure blinds people to the light of Christ's gospel. I repeat, the allure of money, power, and pleasure blinds people to the light of Christ's gospel. Those who reject Christ and prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who reject Christ and prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. See, uh, in, in previous videos before, um, I've talked about myself in the past when when I was younger and much wilder. And uh, I have said in previous videos that by default I was a servant of Satan because the things that I was involved in, the things that I was doing, they were not honorable things to God. They were not honoring God in, 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 in any way. Although I was not worshiping or, 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 or praying or or or, or 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 reading like the, uh, the the you know the satanic bible or, or, or no no things like that i was not honoring god in my lifestyle in my actions in my heart in my speech in my thoughts so by default if everything that i was doing was sinful by default i was a servant of satan I was a worker uh, of Satan. That's why it says right here, those who reject Christ and prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. See, I didn't realize that by not following God's word that I was serving the devil. I just figured I was doing me. You know, I was out grinding, making money. Or I was out uh, uh, doing what I wanted to do, what made me feel good, what made me uh, fleshly, temporarily happy. You know, I thought I was being down. I thought I was, uh, uh, you know, being hardcore. And I wasn't. I was being of the word, of the, of the world. Excuse me. I was being of the world and not of the word. You want to know what hardcore is? 
Hardcore is someone who takes care of his family. Hardcore is, is someone who reads the Bible and prays every day. Hardcore is someone who loves and forgives people, even the people that hurt them. Hardcore is to love somebody without expecting anything uh, in return. Hardcore is dying on the cross. That's hardcore. Dying on the cross for the sins of the world. Being killed by your own creation. And crying out, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. That's hardcore. Hardcore isn't living of this world. I can tell you that, brothers and sisters. So let's let's be careful there. The allure of money, power, and pleasure blinds people to the light of Christ's gospel. Those who reject Christ and prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. Let's none of us do that. Verse 5 reads, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. The focus of Paul's preaching was Christ and not himself. When you witness, tell people about what Christ has done and not about your abilities and accomplishments. People must be introduced to Christ, not to you. And if you hear someone preaching himself or his own ideas rather than Christ, beware. He is a false teacher. Paul willingly served the Corinthian church, even though the people must have deeply disappointed him. Serving people requires a sacrifice of time and personal desires. Being Christ's followers means serving others, even when they do not measure up to our expectations. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. The supremely valuable message of salvation in Jesus Christ has been entrusted by God to frail and fallible human beings, jars of clay. Paul's focus, however, was not on the perishable container, but on its priceless contents. God's power dwelling in us. Though we are weak, God uses us to spread his good news and he gives us power to do his work. Knowing that the power is his, not ours, should keep us from pride and motivate us to keep daily contact with God, who is our power source. Our responsibility is to let people see God through us. Let people see the love of Jesus in you the way you love him. Let people see the light of the Holy Spirit shine outside of you. Let people see the love of Christ in your eyes. Not the hate of the devil. Amen. Verses... 8 through 12 read We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Paul reminds us that though we may think we are at the end of the rope, we are never at the edge of hope. Woo! Paul reminds us, though we may think that we are at the end of the rope, 
we are never at the end of hope. That's powerful. Our perishable bodies are subject to sin and suffering. But God never abandons us because Christ has won the victory over death. We have eternal life. All our risks, humiliations, and trials are opportunities for Christ to demonstrate his power and presence in and through us. Verses 15 through 18 read, All this is for your benefit, so that, the, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul has faced suffering, trials, and distress as he preached the good news. But he knew that they would one day be over and he would obtain God, God's rest and rewards. As we face great troubles, brothers and sisters, it's easy to focus on the pain rather than on our ultimate goal. Just as athletes concentrate on the finish line and ignore their discomfort. We too must focus on the reward for our faith and the joy that lasts forever. No matter what happens to us in this life, we have assurance of eternal life. When all suffering will end and all sorrow will flee away. As you read in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10. Verse 16 reads, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. It is easy to lose heart and quit. We all have faced problems in our relationships or in our work that have caused us to want to think about laying down the tools and walking away. Rather than giving up when persecution wore him down, Paul concentrated on experiencing the inner strength from the Holy Spirit that you read about in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Do not let fatigue, pain, or criticism force you off the job. Ooh, that's good for me. Do not let fatigue, pain, or criticism force me off the job. Force us off the job brothers and sisters renew your commitment to serving Christ don't forsake your eternal reward because of the intensity of today's pain your very weakness allows the resurrection power of Christ to strengthen you moment by moment Your very weakness allows the resurrection power of Christ to strengthen you moment by moment. Verse 17 reads, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal goal that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. I started reading to verse 18. Verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Our troubles should not diminish our faith or disillusion us. 
we should realize that there is a purpose in our sufferings. Problems and human limitations have several benefits. Number one, they remind us of Christ's suffering for us. Number two, they keep us from pride. Number three, they cause us to look beyond this brief life. Number four, they prove our faith to others. And number five, they give God the opportunity to demonstrate his power. See your troubles as opportunities. You know, I'm going to read that again. There's somebody out there that needs to hear this. As well as myself. For our light, chapter 4, verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Our troubles should not diminish our faith or disillusion us. We should realize that there is a purpose in our suffering. There is a purpose in our suffering. Problems and human limitations have several benefits. Number one, they remind us of Christ's suffering for us. Number two, they keep us from pride. Number three, they cause us to look beyond this brief life. Number four, they prove our faith to others. And number five, they give God the opportunity to demonstrate his power. See your troubles as opportunities. Amen. And verse 18, brothers and sisters. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Our ultimate hope when we are experiencing terrible illnesses persecution or pain is the realization that this life is not all that there is. There is life after death. There is life after death. Knowing that we will live forever with God in a place without sin and suffering can help us live above the pain that we face in this life, knowing that we will live forever with God in a place without sin and suffering can help us live above the pain that we face in this life. Man, just great reading tonight, brothers and sisters. A great, powerful. And strong, blessed reading. And I tell you what, this is the first time that I've read Second Corinthians chapter 4. Treasures and Jars of Clay. I, heard, I, I know that there's a band called Jars of Clay. It's uh, about it. I can't tell you none of their songs. But uh, they must have... Got their band name from, from this, from Second Corinthians chapter four. But I myself have never read this. This beautiful chapter in Second Corinthians. And uh, what a powerful chapter! So some verses that stick out to me is um, you know verses 16 through 18 where it says therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen for what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal Verse 7, 
But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Verse 5, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. And verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Great reading, my brothers and sisters. Uh, powerful reading for, for myself. Uh, I pray that it is just as powerful for you guys as well. Isn't God awesome? God is awesome, brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for today, for my wife and my children. I want to thank you for loving and forgiving us. I want to thank you for 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to thank you and give you glory for any sufferings that we have. I want to thank you for continuing to call us until we have answered you, Lord. And I ask you, if we have any loved ones who have not answered your call yet, Lord, please, Lord, please continue to call them until they answer your call, just as we have. I just want to thank you and give you all the glory, Abba, our mighty Father, King Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the Holy Spirit. You are an awesome and loving and forgiving and just God. And although we do not deserve your love, you still give it to us, raining down from heaven, radiating from inside of our own bodies. You give us your Holy Spirit to come into our temples. I just want to thank you, Lord Jesus. And I want to ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us all for all of our sins, that you give us all a discerning heart, that you fill us all with your Holy Spirit and remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, blood clots, Anything that's making us sick or causing us pain, whether it is physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, I ask in the name of Jesus that you heal us right now. I ask that you break chains of addiction. Whether these are chains of addiction in us or in someone that we love, I'm asking that you break chains of addiction in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now we're breaking chains of addiction of drinking, of smoking, of drugging, of lusting of power, of money, of greed. I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sin that we enjoy doing, I ask that if we choose to do that sin, that the Holy Spirit convicts us in our heart and makes us feel sick to our stomach until we repent and turn away from those, these sins. 
I ask that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors and everyone we love. I give you thanks for my wife, Teresa. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my mother, heal her of her, of her blood clot and anything that she has going on with her. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my, my, my sister, Elizabeth, that you help her recover from her back surgery until she's not in pain. I ask you to bless, heal, and protect my sister, Yvette, from her sciatic nerve problem. I ask you to bless, heal, and protect uh, brother, Henry Tim. I ask you to, to bless, heal, and protect prayer warriors, sisters Teresa, brother Ricky Joel Alvarez. May, may you fill him with your Holy Spirit. Give him guidance. Give him strength. Give him comfort. Give him peace. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry. Especially Brother Brian and his wife and children. I ask you to bless, heal, and protect everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran and Hope Lutheran Churches in Aurora. Especially Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children. And I ask you to bless, heal, and protect everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. Especially Pastor David and Angel Rocha and their wives and children. And I ask you again, Lord Jesus, if there's anyone watching this video that has any problems, struggles with any addictions, right now, in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I rebuke all addictions outside of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command all addictions to flee from you right now. In the name of Jesus, addictions must flee right now, immediately, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys have a, have a great night. And we will continue reading. It's a great word. I hope I hope you guys are blessed by it. Good night.